So this week for Movie Club, we watched the movie There Will Be Blood. I actually have a funny story about this movie. I pretty much just got out of basic training and I wanted to watch a really good movie. So I went to the store and I saw There Will Be Blood and I was like, oh cool, Daniel Day-Lewis. I just watched Gangs in New York. Uh, he was badass in that. This sounds like it could be pretty graphic. Then I turned it on and I started watching it and I realized this is about oil. So the movie starts out with like Daniel Day-Lewis's character is like a silver miner and he's pretty much by himself and he gets hurt. And he has to like crawl his way back to his horse and then he goes to a town and with this money he gets from mining silver he's able to start like an oil operation so he hires a couple guys one guy in particular actually has an infant son and he has him down there like scooping that oil by the buckets full and there's an accident one day and it kills the dad so daniel day lewis kind of goes in there and he takes care of the son and up to that point in the movie there is no dialogue and that's a good 15 minutes into the movie and from there we get to see like 10 years in the future where he's going town to town as a self-proclaimed oil man and he's pretty much trying to buy up these people's land so he can start like getting oil and he uses his son as like we're family business uh, we're not going to do you any wrong we're going to help you out let's all get rich together is what he kind of implied and then that just kind of like evolves his character and for me at the very beginning i'm like wow daniel day lewis is such a good guy he's taking care of this guy's kid he's i think he's doing right by that guy then i'm like oh he's kind of a dick oh i didn't expect that but oh well so about halfway in the movie i'm like wow daniel day lewis's character is an asshole and by the end of it i wouldn't be surprised if he was like i'm the devil i didn't see that coming a lot of other people were like oh i saw he was totally evil from the get-go but that wasn't me. I went in completely not knowing anything that was going on, and I thought he was just a nice guy at first who was corrupted over time. Obviously, Daniel Day-Lewis is in this. Uh, Paul Dano is in this, who's really good at being a really creepy, weird dude, especially with this new movie coming out where he, like, I think he's a pedophile or something. He's really good about being a really creepy, scary kind of dude. So he did a really good job in this movie, and he's kind of like a pastor for his church. And the church is kind of like a cult. To this town pretty much. Paul Dano's character and Daniel Day-Lewis's relationship in this film and it's a really big part of how they are always challenging each other and always butting heads because Daniel Day-Lewis is there to get the oil and get the hell out where Paul Dano's character is say he's like running the church and he's trying to get money for the church and like to grow his congregation pretty much and they're pretty much it's a power struggle I mean it's different power struggle for each one of them and there's two scenes in particular where they like slap the shit at each other and beat the hell out of each other but nothing really comes of it and it just like shows their hatred for each other. Now this movie is directed by Paul Thomas Anderson who also did Boogie Nights. Pretty sure he went into this movie thinking I'm going to make an Oscar nominated film. Uh, everything about this will be Oscar worthy. And he did just that. He got the actors, he got the story, he got the visuals, he got everything nailed down tight and it looks good. What's one thing that always comes with Oscar flicks? The length. It's two and a half hours long. That doesn't really bug me. I'm used to sitting down watching long movies. It doesn't bother me. I think that'll be most people's complaint about this movie is it's just so very long. But to me, it was really good. And it was like slowly paced, like slowly unfolding Daniel Day-Lewis's character throughout the movie and seeing what he really was from the beginning. Daniel Day-Lewis pretty much uses people in this movie like pieces on a chessboard. When I say people, I'm talking about like his son, his brother. Everybody in this movie is expendable to him. And if he doesn't get what he wants, there will be blood. Boom, zing, bitches. Now, a certain scene in particular where he's like talking to his brother, he's like, I really don't like people. They kind of get in my way. If I could make enough money and just get away from people, I would be happy. And that quote right there shows you how much he hates people. So we got the tension between Daniel Day-Lewis's character and Paul Dano's character. But then we get to the relationship between like Daniel Day-Lewis's son and his brother. Of like his son either found something out about his brother and he's like trying to get rid of him or he's jealous and he's not sure what to do, so he pretty much tries to kill him. And we see, like, Daniel Day-Lewis's character getting tested. He's like, oh, well, this guy's my blood. I've known him forever, but he's like, I've raised my son forever, but he's not really my son. And Daniel Day-Lewis pretty much chooses the guy that came to him and said he's his brother instead of, like, the son he's raised for the past nine or ten years. But after we find out the truth about his brother, he is never able to trust anybody again, and that, like, echoes for the next 20, 30 years afterwards. So besides the tension from Paul Dano and Daniel Day-Lewis's characters are always butting heads, we fast forward to, like, in the future when the stock market crashes and Paul Dano's character comes in and he says, I need money, I'm broke, I made bad investments, God didn't tell me what to do. And Daniel Day-Lewis is so whacked out of his mind. Not aviator Leonardo DiCaprio whacked out, but he's, like, locked up in his house which kind of like really resembles a Stanley Kubrick film. And you got Daniel Day-Lewis just sitting there in his old mansion by himself and he's like shooting at random stuff because he's bored. He he doesn't want to be around anybody because he hates people so much. And whenever I think about There Will Be Blood, I think of that ending scene in the bowling alley and I can't say it without spoiling it. So remember when I said Daniel Day-Lewis' character was the devil? It's because of that end scene in the movie. But I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, so if you've never seen it, watch it. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you know I'm talking about the milkshake part, so I'm just going to leave it at that. This was an awesome pick. I'm really glad we decided to do this one. I've been looking forward to watching this again. So I can't wait to see what we do next week, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.